In First John, sacred pages, a question posed so grand: Does Trinity emerge, or by human eyes misplaced? A unity of witness in words so deeply spun. Let's seek the truth within as the journey has begun. Oh, Father, Word and Spirit, a testimony so divine. In heaven's court, they bear record a unity we find. On earth, the spirit, water, blood, a witness strong and clear. In unity, they testify the truth we hold so dear. Is a principle so rare, but in First John a Trinity, some claim to see yet unity of witness, the key to set us free. Oh, Father, Word and Spirit. A testimony so divine In heaven's court They bear record A year Unity we find On earth the spirit, water, blood A witness strong and clear In unity Testify the truth we hold so deep in Jesus, Son of God. Our faith we firmly place, eternal life is found in knowing God's sweet grace, not a complex mystery. Welcome. We want to take a brief moment to focus on 1 John chapter 5 verse 7. Is it proof of the Trinity in the Bible? People often point to 1 John chapter 5 verse 7 as proof of the Trinity. Let's take a closer look to see if this is really true. The Bible says one person should not be a witness and recommends two or three witnesses. Matthew chapter 18 verses 16, KJV. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 1, KJV. 
This is the third time I am coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 19, KJV. Against an elder receive not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 28, KJV. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Now, the whole chapter of 1 John chapter 5 stresses belief in Jesus as the Son of God, but let's just focus on verses 5 to 8. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. We see that we need to believe in Jesus as the Son of God who came to save us. In heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit bear record or witness to this fact. They are in agreement of this fact. On earth, the Spirit, water, and blood bear witness. If verse 7 means the Trinity, then verse 8 should also imply another Trinity. In John chapter 17, written by the same author of 1 John, Jesus prays for his disciples. In verse 3 he says, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. So we get eternal life by knowing the only true God and Jesus Christ, whose witness is given as the Son of God in 1 John chapter 5. In verses 20 to 22 he prays, Neither pray I for these alone but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one. So the disciples were to be one, as Jesus himself is one with God the Father. Now we are not one thing, but we are in unity. So 1 John chapter 5 verse 7 speaks about the unity of their witness. The chapter does not deal with the nature of God at all, but just emphasizes the fact the Trinity itself denies that Jesus is indeed the Son of God. How can he be the Son, yet they are co-eternal and co-equal? Here's a closer look at 1 John chapter 5 verse 7 and 8 specifically, with Strong's numbers displayed to show the similarity between them. 1. The same word for three is used in both verses, G5, 1, 4, Fio, 2. The same word was originally used for both bear record and bear witness, G3, 1, 4, 3, 3. Both verses use the same reference, original term, for ghost and spirit, G4, 1, 5, 1, 4. The same one, used in verse 7, is also used in verse 8, G15 to 20. So why is it that when it comes to verse 7, it means the Trinity, but not in verse 8? 1st John a chapter The verse is so profound The Trinity merge And every word is found A closer look reveals A truth beyond our ken Unity of witness Not a mystery But an amen Father word and spirit, a unity so deep, in heaven heights they testify, the witness we shall keep, on earth the spirit, water, blood, in unity declare, the truth that sets us free, a mystery beyond compare. Matthew, Corinthians, Timothy and Hebrew speak, two or three as witnesses, a principle so unique, yet first John's unity, in verses 5 to 8, speaks not of God's nature, 
but the Son who we celebrate. Father, Word, and Spirit, a unity so deep, heaven's heights, they testify, the witness we shall keep, on earth the Spirit, water, blood, and unity declare, the truth that sets us free, a mystery beyond compare. Son of God, the key to life and grace, not a puzzle, unsolvable, but a love we can embrace, the unity of witness in words so intertwined, a truth that's everlasting, in Christ our peace we find. Father, Word and Spirit, a unity so deep, in heaven's highest they testify, the witness we shall keep, on earth the Spirit, water, blood, in unity declare, the truth that sets us free, a mystery we